Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. Hey, Doc. Tell her it's an old American custom called smooch. And tell her she smooches good, huh? And tell her I'd like to give her some advanced lessons, huh? 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 Doc! Doc! Hey, Doc! <laughs> this is episode 159, recorded August 27th, 2023. I am your host, Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, and maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. It was a very good year. In each episode, we'll discuss the monsters, spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. With me this week are my incredible co-hosts. First up is Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of Horror or the other ones, too. And uh, <laughs> film producer, director with Recapic <laughs> Productions, comic book artist and writer. Chad, how you doing? I am. I'm very good. Very good. You are. You are. That's what all the letters and, and, and uh, notes tell me. So I'm trying to tell. Who is, what is, I can't quite see the, oh, Frankenstein? Who? Your shirt? Oh, Frankenstein, Frankenstein Mr. Wolfman. Mr. Wolfman. Cool. All right. Also, with us, oh, is the... I should tell you too who I got this from. They have a Paul Nashi Curse of the Werewolf shirt, just, just ooh. like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I think Paul Nashi. Also, with us is Daphne. Awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell, Daphne. It's good to see you. Oh, it's great uh, to see you guys. How you doing? I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. This was uh, an interesting movie. That's going to be fun to talk about. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> also with us is the one, the only, the OG HNR host, Dr. Rotten. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing good. Oh, my shoulder hurts. What's what's going on? Oh, what's going <laughs> no, I, um, This was an interesting film. <laughs> this was interesting. There's going to be a lot to talk about. Good, bad, and grumpy. Is there? <laughs> we'll find out more, more than you think. all right decades oh. of horror and gruesome magazine are partnering with play now media on several other channels uh in particular classic the classic era is on the classic sci-fi movie channel the classic horror movie channel and the wicked horror tv channel so you can check us out there uh lots of good uh movies there i like it Available on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, online websites, and across all OTT platforms. Over the top platforms. Over the top. That'd be yeah, I, I, I didn't know what that meant. So, uh, warning here: uh, this is a spoiler podcast, um, and, and you know the particular movie we're doing today. I'm going to do math on the fly here, Doc. Uh, 50, 64 years old. Um, the, uh, so, you know, if you haven't seen it, you should, you should go watch it. Um, and it's on those channels. No. Yeah. What channels was this on? It was on almost everything, wasn't it? Tubi. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, remind you that later on. Um, on this podcast, we start out with a few details about the film and, uh, give each of our first impressions on the movie, then we'll move into a general discussion about whatever trips our trigger, hopefully relating to the film. <laughs> but not necessarily. But not necessarily. Not, definitely not in, guaranteed. In <laughs> our movie this episode is The Manster from 1959. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not The Manster. What That's is just that? A, cool statue that was in the Buddhist temple. Nah. Where'd you get showed... those beads? Where'd you get those beads? I don't know. That's exactly it. <laughs> These uh, bleed? These bleeds exactly. These bleeds. <laughs> I was thinking of. <laughs> he's, he's got the goo -goo googly eyes. Um, directed by George P. Brakeston and Kenneth G. Crane. Written by William J. Sheldon. 
and a story by George Brixton. The cast includes Peter Dinelli, Jane Hilton, Tetsu Nakamura, Terry Zimmern, Norman Van Holly, and Jerry Ito. The production company is United Artists, um, more specifically, I guess, United Artists of Japan, and Shaw Brixton Enterprises, which was uncredited, and I couldn't find any information on that. Uh, filmed in Japan, dun, dun, dun. release date, 10th of July, 1959, in Japan, March 28th, 1962, in the U.S. Working titles, Nightmare, The Split, uh, in Germany, The Manster, Albert Mensch, Albus Monster, which you could guess what that means. In Mexico, La Fuga del Monstruo, The Escape of the Monster, and also El Monstruo de Dos Cabezas, the two-headed monster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Synopsis. An American journalist stationed in Japan is given a mysterious injection by a mad scientist. And boy, is he mad. Turning him into a murderous two-headed monster. Yep. Okay. That's what happened, all right. It did. Um this was my pick, so I'm going to go first impressions. Yay. And I saw this movie a few years ago, um, and was just it, it's one of the few movies where you're like, I'm on one hand going, this is the silliest dialogue I've ever heard, and on the other hand, there was a couple of things that happened in the movie, and I went, wow, what the heck was that? So uh, one of which being uh, the second head popping up and then the split, which, which is the one title, <laughs> which I'm just like, wow, that's just insane. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's I don't know what else to say about this. I, I mean, the actors <laughs> give it their all, but the dialogue is just just silly. Um, I was joking because I was writing down so many quotes. I like the makeup. I like the head. Uh, we get lots of good. There's two lengthy running chase scenes. The cops chase the monster on foot <laughs> over hill, over dale, over scaffold, etc. <laughs> while he knocks off different people. Um, it's got the strangest setting you ever saw. This, this like one of the main settings is a. A house and a laboratory that you have to walk up several hundred yards of mountain to get to <laughs> with no path. I was just like, wow, where is this coming from? Anyway, but there's some, it's kind of cheesy makeup in some points, and I, but I like the head. So, okay. Um, and the ending was really cheesy too. <laughs> and it was hard to like the main character. I, I'm done. We're gonna, we'll, we'll get into details after this. So let's go with Daphne next, right down the line. Daphne, what did you think of The Manster? Well, this is my first time watching it, and it was weirdly wonderful. It was weird, and uh, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of what and huh going on, but... But uh, it was, it was, I had fun watching it. I definitely didn't get bored. But um, Larry had like zero, def yeah, he fought a zero percent against his bad side. It was like he got a shot and he just became his dark side. It was, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> no struggle going on there. <laughs> Braced it. And totally, he got a yeah, yeah. He got a shot in more ways than one, right? <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Yeah. So you had a. I spent a lot of time going. God, what a jerk! You know. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I did. It was fun. That part was kind of funny, but um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Chad Hunt, how about you? Had you seen this before? No, I had not. I, for some reason, I heard about this and was getting it confused with um, how to make a monster. Oh, uh, wow. For, okay. for some reason, uh, I was getting the titles. Somehow they were mixing in my brain. So uh, 
I had this is my first time seeing it. And yeah, this is a weird, weird uh, film. It's uh, unlikable characters all the way around. <laughs> Even Amiko. I mean, I was tired of her after like the first five minutes. <laughs> The uh, I, it's uh, uh, the one I, in the was, cage. Yeah, I was just, oh, okay. you know, I was sick of her. You know, by the <laughs> by the fifth time they showed her, like, come on, <laughs> come on, come on, and uh, you know, I, I was tired of that. And 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 Larry, I had zero, zero, as Daphne <laughs> said, zero empathy <laughs> for. <laughs> Even when he wasn't under the influence of the shot, <laughs> you know, and you want to know why? Because when somebody asked him, "Hey, Larry, how old are you?" and he said thirty-five, <laughs> he was a friggin' liar right out of the gate. Because if that guy was any younger than like sixty years old, <laughs> you know, my old Aunt Petunia still has her uh, spleen intact, if that's the case, and and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just weird, man. It's just weird. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a, I don't know what I thought about it, really. I just, uh, it was a thing. It, and I kept wanting to watch it, but it was like wanting to, you know, rubbernecking at a car uh, accident uh, scene. You're just going, eh, eh, what is going on there? And, uh, but... The the head was cool. The um, even his makeup was pretty pretty cool uh, un, under the lights and and the and the stuff like that. Um, but yeah, everybody was just grating on my nerves big time in this in this movie. Um, the crazy old doctor. I don't think he was mad as much as he just was. He was just crazy. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least things mad scientists do some somehow make make sense he was just i'm going to make two heads on him okay well, his, his, hair was neatly, his hair was neatly combed and he never cackled maniacally so no he yeah, didn't so he was just he was just crazy you know and then there's the, what was the what was the girl's name that um uh, that was tara? helping him tara yeah tara is like okay well, whatever you want, we'll go ahead and we'll, I'll seduce this guy and and uh, is that the plan? And then what's the end game here, Doc? What's the end game? And he's like, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know. So that's where I am with it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chad. And bringing up the rear is Doc Rod. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Oh man, the the actor Peter uh, Dine Dinely Dinelli. Yeah, Dinelli. He Dinelli. he was uh, approaching forty when he filmed this. So, Chad. Still, man. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody uh, got the birth certificate. He, he, was, he, up was, on that. he was approaching forty. Uh, this movie is delightfully stupid. <laughs> It oh my god! It is just I like it. I, it's the first time I've ever seen it. I I knew about it and I thought I had seen it, but I I I must confuse it with something else. But the I remember it because of the eyeball on the shoulder because in the monster books there was a shot of him with the eyeball on the shoulder and I thought that was the, the craziest thing when I was a kid. Back when I was a monster kid, I was like ooh, um, and it, it is kind of ooh in the movie and they, they do a really good job of it, although it's incredibly fake you can see what's happening but anyway it doesn't matter the whole concept of this guy and s slowly becoming a kind of this Jekyll and Hyde but with a twist <laughs> um, <laughs> and it does have this this weird oh man the split scene behind the tree uh, okay I, I both loved and hated this movie at the same mm -hmm. time and I'm trying to figure that out <laughs> but yeah. I, I did enjoy <laughs> this I had a good time with it it's not a good movie, but yeah, it might be. <laughs> figure that one out. It's up to yeah. you. He's not fully awake yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of where I'm at, Doc. Mm -hmm. Although I, I, without saying whether it's a good or a bad, well, it's it's. it's the, the, I'm telling you, the dialogue. I can't tell you, and it didn't matter who was talking. It was weird. <laughs> it didn't matter who was talking. The Japanese doctor 
in particular probably has the most dialogue. Maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. But he said that just a lot of crazy things. And then <laughs> uh, the, uh, the uh, anyway, what's his name? Larry. He starts out in the first, like, what, five or ten minutes. He's a really nice guy. No, and he's a liar. But anyway, go ahead. He tells his <laughs> boss how much he loves his wife and he wants to get home to her and everything. And then he gets that shot, the doctor. Mm -hmm. drugs him and gives him a shot with the new enzyme. This time it will work. <laughs> the new enzyme. <laughs> I put That's bats in it this time. That's all we need to know. So I just burned up my last my last experiment in the volcano that's right, connected right, to this right, lab. Right. My, yeah, the yeah. Volcano that's five, five minutes later, it's yeah, here's, work here's, <laughs> here's my wife in the cage. <laughs> Which he looks like now, and the other guy after he kills uh, three it's women. It's his brother, and yeah. his brother. Yeah, yeah, it's his brother. Mm -hmm. Kills three women in a Japanese bath that shows up, and uh, he kills him, and then throws him into like the world's <laughs> biggest blast furnace. I guess. Oh my, it was huge. Anyway, oh. <sighs> but this time, <laughs> it'll I added more paprika. Yeah, I'm mean, more paprika. I mean, you're you're just waiting for the little head to pop up, and when it does, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. <laughs> I mean, uh, to, be fair, to be fair, though, two headed man movies have not um, ever been that convincing. No, no, and they all like they all about the same. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this. You know, I didn't do first, any research. Right? <laughs> I, well, that's what I was thinking. I couldn't think of one before this. There may well be one. Um, so we got like three of them in the seventies. Since we're yeah. talking about that, we might as well throw it up. There. Oh my god! Look at that! Look at that! That's wonderful. And then they split, and look at him, and he still looks yeah. like he's a like a half werewolf down there. Hey, I don't know what that is. Now. You came well, he, out of me. Well, I noticed they don't. We just got done talking about House of Dracula last week, and how great the transformation was, and how smooth the lap dissolves were. Where in this one, yeah, not so much. It was like. Yeah. Three laps, I think, three overlaps, mm -hmm. and the god, they were a little, just a little like blur in between. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, look at well, that. At least, when he, at least when you first see them, they did kind of depend a lot on dark and yeah. shadow and stuff like that. So you, yeah. you you do see that, but yeah, it's backlit. I mean, the, the cinematographer yeah. tried. <laughs> I mean, that top that top picture is is pretty cool looking. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, it, with the with the lighting and everything, it uh -huh. makes it look really cool. But that one mm -hmm. on the bottom, <laughs> when you get a good look at it in the light, oh man! But by the time you get there, you're all in, though. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're you're either you've either turned it off, right, or you're all in. And I yeah. was I was definitely like, bring it. Bring it. I don't care at this point. I just, he, Let's see what you got. But I, I loved it when they, it when they did split. When they did split, yeah. The guy kept the clothes and the and the fuzzy thing jumped out. But yeah. his clothes were tattered. Yeah. They were tattered. They they said, Well, we gotta have some logic. <laughs> <laughs> and they did put a little bit of blood on the, the section where this person just emerged from yeah, no, his no, shoulder. No. There was a little bit of blood there. Oh man. They, so it was it was, well, so you tell me when they when his head, when the second head first totally appears, first it's just the eyeballs. I guess it's supposed to like be pushing its way up or growing. But when the head finally pops up, it looks everything like a, a rubber mask being blown up. Yeah, and I was going to say it looked like a it balloon. Just kind of went, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I loved watching them from the back when he was running. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, and yeah. <laughs> oh but yeah but like doc was saying it's like i just it was wonderfully weird i just was like okay this is nuts this is nuts what i'm watching uh, i mean we'll get we'll get to a whole bunch of but like his, yeah. his wife finally comes to japan and confronts him and she says you gotta decide now and then he turns around and walks out the door with the girl <laughs> like, yeah this guy is so bad he's such a turner i know he was so bad <laughs> Oh, oh son, God. son, you got a chaka growing out of your neck. <laughs> exactly. He got that shot, and then that guy took him out to the geisha oh, party he just, that night. Yeah. And that's when he, he got drunker and snot, and that's uh -huh. when he did the little smooch, smooch speech. Oh my God. And he I really uh, liked those geishas. Yeah. No, and the doctor was just no struggle. 
The doctor was just grinning and smiling. He was like, this guy, he's so easy to manipulate. Yeah. He just, he's, uh... You know, you f I feel like in, in um, usually you see a little bit of, you know, struggle between the guy, nope. the, your bad side nope. and your good side. <laughs> That's usually what the story is about. Well, no, it, was it wasn't about that. It was... We're going to separate this. Guy. It was all Mr. Hyde and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Are you what? going to see those? Are you going to that geisha party tonight? Oh, no geishas for me. Next scene, yeah. geishas everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Let's geisha do some girl. advanced education. Yeah. yeah. Once he got that shot, he was like, and then don't ask him anything about what he's been doing. <laughs> Just. We're all going to take a bath. All three of us? <laughs> I'm four, actually. Yeah. <laughs> He walks into his boss's office. Okay, you might as well start the Inquisition. I've been gone for three days. And he just flops on the couch or chair, whatever it is. Yeah. Quit fighting me, man. That's a, a, he was like a teenager from Rebel Without a Cause. Um, well, there was also this, since we're talking special effects. So I, I love uh -huh. that scene, too, where he, he suddenly, I don't know, he's always scratching his shoulder, then all of a sudden he goes into contortions. And there's there's no special effects other than him, unless you count those fingernails. <laughs> I guess, I guess. And then and the later they get fuzzy. And yeah, then the second shot is after the hand, and it's interesting to have, you know, the normal hand next to the hair. Looks like he's pregnant hand. and he's holding his belly. Yeah, that's I was what I was thinking. thinking. The same thing. I was like, what is going? Oh, on? That was a, that, what was that, that character? That was his. Uh, that was a woman he grabbed in the alley. Oh. That's right. And pulled her back up. Um, yeah. And then, and then, you know, he scratching, he scratched his shoulder and he pulls back his shirt. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you know, man. there's a lot of big music. Now, we, we've seen this before. We've seen in Army of Darkness, Ash had uh, the yeah, eyeball yeah, when he yeah, split yeah. in two. Uh -huh. And then, didn't the Mana 2 have that as well? May well have. Well, didn't she remember. have that in our, on her uh -uh. back? Or... Mm -hmm. Oh, it might have been on her yeah. back. Yeah, back on her back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing but is the, growing out of her. Yeah, I mean, do you, do you count the Mystical Army of Darkness as one with a two-headed monster? I guess you do, don't you? Right? Because for at one point, yeah, thirty years yeah. later. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's all those little uh, ashes that come out of the broken mirror. Mm -hmm. Well, there's and there's good they, ash and bad ash. And yeah. then he, well, he, the one that stood off from ash. ash became the bad guy, the main. <laughs> guy. And yeah, it, and then it, yeah, yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. But they do. But there's they, a scene they, of them running through the forest, and you've got the ash uh -huh. head coming out of the side fighting him, and that uh -huh. kind of thing. So yeah, the, and he had control very much like this movie. Hand, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. the better. <laughs> Except uh, Larry wasn't trying to fight his. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> no. wasn't. He the more booze and ladies. Around. Around. <laughs> do you think me ugly? Do you find me ugly? Well, I'm and, ugly. And, Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Don't look at me. I can't help it I'm right here. <laughs> so this is this is so he get he sees this stuff, right? Then we get the I <laughs> think that top 30, picture is 35 in the, years uh, old. <laughs> Judas Temple, and I he think. is. That's the crazy part. I know. Well, you gotta go look at his bio. I, mm -hmm. the guy he died when he was like 57, I think. Mm -hmm. And the a picture of him. He's still alive, right I here. think. Looks like he's like 70, 75. Yeah. Yep. Um, so he's just one of those guys that life was hard. Uh, and his wife actually, uh, you know, the the Jane Hilton that plays his wife was his real wife. The blonde. Really? Yep. And she died when she was like 52. Hmm. Was... Yeah, just a few months after he did. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, SOB back then. Yeah, that's where he goes. He goes to see the Buddhist priest for some reason. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's gonna Buddha away the the badness. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but mm -hmm. instead, um, kills him. Goes after the but bleeds. He's running around with those bleeds. <laughs> yeah, these bleeds. Sunken <laughs> eyes, wild look on his face, and then mm -hmm. his buddy Ian introduces him to a psychiatrist. And that goes well. And then he goes to see the psychiatrist and he's uh, holding his eye and there's his hand. and yeah, It's great. Busts <laughs> bus his way into the psychiatrist's office yeah. for help, I guess. I don't know what it was. I don't know. 
even though this is a, a 59, 60 movie, right? Mm -hmm. It feels so much like the late 30s to early 50s monster mm -hmm. movies they used to put out, you know, where, oh. you know, the Electric Man and all the other yeah. things. <laughs> this, <laughs> it, just, it just feels like a, a throwback, but yet it isn't. Almost feels a little bit like a poverty rope. Yeah, kind of in a way. Though. Yeah, but it, I don't know. It, it's kooky. It's crazy, <laughs> and there's probably a drinking game buried in it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, bottom picture, man. The guy's at the door is like, I "Told you to stop dancing in my office." I know. He looks like he's going. I do you do. I do you do. You don't know nothing about this. <laughs> he like he sees him. He hears him, he hears him come in the door. He's sitting there and he gets up and he goes like he's scurries. got some like he's got some other door. He kind of scurries around to this other door. Oh yeah, that's he right. Peeks he out him. and he sees him like in, in a in a pose similar to that out in the hallway and he's like going, Oh, this ain't good. <laughs> he goes and right away tries to call the police. Uh anyway, yeah. it's just that didn't work um, out. Well, and here's the uh the first one that was his brother Genji mm, when he's mm -hmm. sneaking up on the women in the in the bath. Yeah, there is a nice splatter effect for uh, yeah. It was beginning this blood. movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They started uh, off right away with the uh, with some splatter, like two minutes or so. Isn't this dirty dishwater bath the best, Harriet? Yeah, Nancy, it's great. That's. <laughs> That's so we don't have to worry about having nude scenes, I think. A little milk, little milk in there to make it cloudy. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> um, I think it's more along the lines of a hundred thousand other people have bathed in it before they did. Well, there's that too. It does it does look like the bath water after all your siblings bathe first. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. Remember those days. Did any of you guys watch the color version? I did not. Mm -hmm. Did you? No, I just I watched the black and white. I was just wondering if it would have so how for different. Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> you could stream this from uh, Amazon Prime um, and Tubi were the two most well known ones. And uh, on Prime, they had both a black and white and a colorized version. I watched the prime black and white version. It was really yeah, nice. I, it was I, pretty I, nice and crisp. Yeah, it was good. Mm -hmm. good yeah, it was good. All right. Well, I think it's a good prime. time to stop. And, See ya. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How can this show get? Uh, how can we make the show a little better? For, for oh, <laughs> it's now time for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> lines with Chad. Is it really? It is. Because these, okay, here, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get us through this, folks. So. <laughs> <laughs> you need to, you need to, well, okay, you, no, never, never mind. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. The taglines for the movie The Manster are as follows See the two headed killer creature. He kills two heads? Yes. Oh, hmm. So if you got two heads, beware. <laughs> the Master Suspense Thrill Show on a double bill with the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus. Wow. That is also very strange. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk <laughs> about that in a minute. Together. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A mature horror show. <laughs> a mature. Yes, we talk about infidelity. They were in a they were in a bath on the other That's side right. of a yeah, yeah. sliding screen together. I guess so. I guess so. And he was cheating. Doc is skeptical. <laughs> okay. The terror that split a man in two, half human, half monster. He's a monster. Uh, that's that sells it. The monster. <laughs> The terror that turned some kind of being into a monster. A being. Turned one monster into another town of monster. And then into another monster. <laughs> Before your startled eyes, man changes to monster. Once normal man actually spits in two, half human, half inhuman, 
in the laboratory of the damned, in which women are brutalized by the monster born of man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he takes a big breath after that. Uh, but you, you know, it's, it's not lying. You do see somebody split in two. So. <laughs> and the I last tagline. I didn't see women. Well, other than his, well, that's true. Never mind. He killed his wife. Yeah. His wife. Never mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let me get this over with, please. <laughs> 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 half man, half monster. All friend. I all mean, terror. All, all friend. <laughs> oh. Okay. And that's been Taglines with Chad. Thanks, Chad. I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> now we can look at the poster. So, uh, and this is, you know, so there is a, uh, I believe it's a Scream Factory Blu-ray, and there's no extras on it, but it is a great transfer. It's really mm. sharp, uh, and this is the cover. So to me, you know, this doesn't feel like a movie poster because there's no credits on it, right? Right. Just I don't know. It's it's hard to find VHS one that actually cover or has that on there, but that's the the Blu-ray cover and the stuff you see in most of the. Is it, it might just be because I know that it was a, a double bill. Um, is that the first victim in the other movie? The uh, maybe, and we, I, I could just sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna just, jump okay. to that. Right. Other than that, I love I like that picture actually. I like the color, the, the blue. I, and I did red. too, I like the colors. Mm -hmm. Uh, then this one adds uh, Emiko mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll put a little drawing of it. This figured. Again, unsure who the person. Yeah, is the person in the bottom is definitely yeah. <laughs> not in this movie that I can tell. That's a great um, picture of Larry with the eye. Oh, yes, he looks. He looks yes. kind of actually scary. Well, and they added uh, blood on the tip of the knife too. That's the other. <laughs> mm, they did. They did. Uh, I hate Larry. These are <laughs> Larry. These are like I don't know. They got to be like psychedelic re-releases or DVD covers or something or VHS covers. Even. Yeah, they're yeah. fun. <laughs> but they're yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, I, I would have picked that up if I would have seen it. It's pretty funny, fun looking. And then uh, looks like he's laughing. that's a Mexican. <laughs> La Fuga de la Yeah, there's the dimension scene. Kind of like the colors, mm -hmm. but other than that, mm -hmm. it's a little vague. And... You know, this was made in Japan. Mm, that's that great. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good. Oh, that's one. nice. Mm -hmm. He's got his hands around the, his throat, and then a color mm -hmm. Japanese, a different one. And it was originally called the uh, Split, the working title. So that's on there. I don't know I like which one, one I too. like like best. Okay, so now the double bill. So, silly me, I tried looking up the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus. And? And what and, is it really? Daphne's I'm totally, I'm, I'm totally spacing out. I'm, I'm so mad at myself um, because I can't remember the, the name of that incredible it's, movie. It's a mask. Eyes Without a Face. Eyes Without a Face, mm. yeah. So, imagine Eyes Without a Face on a double bill with this movie. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because I, when I looked at this poster <laughs> at the top, it says, a ghastly elegance that suggests Tennessee Williams. <laughs> <laughs> what? That is awesome. Uh, and then there's another line, which is at, at least over the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus. Subjected for special showings at the Edinburgh Film Festival. Mm. or selected mm. i'm sorry selected were there worthy of the great horror classics of our time mm -hmm. some That's are all true all about that yeah. movie <laughs> oh that's a shame right there that's, that's just the strangest tennessee bill. williams <laughs> well not only that the, the same uh this lopert company which i know i've heard before was a distributor for Eyes Without a Face in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I assume they renamed it. I'm trying to remember where I heard that name before. Yeah, maybe it'll come to me or one of our people can comment mm -hmm. below. 
but it's kind of a cool poster. I mean, I like the mm -hmm. mix of colors and the mm -hmm. got the stabbing. We got the skeleton strapped in the chair. We got the. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening to that woman on the floor there. <laughs> but can't be good. Now this is this <laughs> is the blurry. one that, that seems like a real movie poster to me, and that's mm -hmm. probably the you know when it was originally called the split, the working title. What, and that big long tagline is down there. And in the that. werewolf. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's a wolf, all right. He's the wolf monster. <laughs> wolf Kong. Um, that works. <laughs> well, and, and actually, the, the little uh, figure there under just under the S to the left of that, mm -hmm. when the uh, the bad mo after the split, the monster throws Terra down the mm -hmm. I don't know bottomless pit of hell. I don't volcano, know volcano, yeah. Was that, oh, was that what it was? Yeah. That's what I thought of it was, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought it was, yeah. And then down he went, too. And a couple wow, ads. Wow, look at that one. Certified X. <laughs> As in, we're barring anyone from coming in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> Did you see Faustus too? <laughs> no, I'm not staying for that one. Get, get back in there. It's Tennessee. It's like Tennessee Williams. Tennessee uh, and Williams. And a couple wow, of DVD. These. I like these covers. Mm -hmm. And the bottom one is German. That's a monster fun. Ooh, Tokyo. that one is creepy. Alpha video. Wow. <laughs> the bottom All one. All right. Yeah. I know. I, I, I go a little nuts on these posters, but I just. I like the yeah how a, a movie that probably almost nobody saw in the U.S. Um, gets that many different posters and titles and stuff. Um, the cast, okay, so we've been talking about him. Peter Dinelli plays Larry Stanford, and Terry Zimmern is Tara, who begins as. Uh, the doctor's um, assistant, Dr. Suzuki. <laughs> I like I, Suzuki. She's a uh, beautiful woman. Um, and then underneath that is uh, uh, Mrs. Linda Stanford, played by Jane Hilton, Peter Dinelli's real life wife. And I this when this scene came on, I was one of the ones where I went, "What the?" I mean, they had a her face was on the screen four times. There's those three mirrors on her vanity and and then hers or makeup table or whatever that's called. Mm -hmm. There's, to me, it was just the way she was talking to him. Like I had a dream about us today. <laughs> <laughs> we were holding hands, <laughs> and you looked into my eyes longingly. <laughs> Are you there, Larry? <laughs> it just it was a weird shot composition to me. I mean, he's on the other end. He's just talking on the phone, just his face. Mm -hmm. But on her end, we've got these fractured mm -hmm. images. It must have been uh, because of her three personalities. <laughs> the loving wife, the psychopathic stalker. <laughs> the woman that can't let go, even though she knows she's in a toxic relationship. <laughs> And oh. underneath her is Tetsu Nakamura, who plays Dr. Suzuki. Not a hair. He's a truck. He's a troublemaker. I'm telling you. <laughs> he is. He is he a is. troublemaker, and he delights in it. Mm -hmm. Not the actor, but the character. I don't know. The actor may be too. I don't know. <laughs> well, they say it doesn't like one person doesn't matter. This one person's life doesn't matter for my yeah. scientific no. um, discovery. Yeah, the, cl the classic. He well, decides, he, he, I'm going to give this guy a, right. a, a drink. Oh, as soon as he meets him, he starts asking, he starts getting a health history, you know, like, how old are you? And any major, <laughs> yeah, it's like any major surgeries recently. Oh, you know, it's like, he, you know, it's like. It would have worked if he hadn't lied allergies. about his age. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> I, I, that's another quote I wrote down. I, 
I ask personal questions sometimes. It's the scientist in me. I'm interested in the way people develop the glandular type and so on. May the I glandular. Ask a few <laughs> May I ask a few more questions? <laughs> Uh, and then he, he likes to say, uh, boy, was your last bowel movement solid? <laughs> so he's Larry. We should, we should pretty much. That's about, that's about how close he gets. So here's, uh, oh yeah, we have, uh, Norman Van Howley who plays his, uh, boss and ready to uh, make his move. He is. Uh, he's like, yeah. I'm going to slide on into these DMs here. <laughs> In the bottom, uh, bottom picture is uh, police superintendent Ida, or Ada, Ida, played by Jerry Ito, mm -hmm. um, who has no accent whatsoever. No. Uh, no. Dr. Suzuki does. No and then finally, solve a problem either. Emiko, <laughs> who oh. was, who used to be Dr. Suzuki's wife, and before that, his sweetheart. Sweetheart. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> she demanded to take the, oh. take the drug. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is rather yeah, creepy. She though. looks like she's uh, it, regretting that decision right now. I, I got to say, I do like I do like the makeup on her when they sh oh, showed her. I thought that was pretty cool. It was it was uh, yeah that eyeball was. <laughs> that From now right on, place. you wash your own dirty underwear. <laughs> I'm not your sweetheart anymore. Oh, let me go. <laughs> well, then when when you such when a kidder. this guy <laughs> when Tara is like he asked Tara to I, I don't know what he asked her to do, but <laughs> sink her claws into Larry to keep him there until he develops, I guess, till he transforms after he goes through his cycles. Uh, but anyway, he's worried that Tara is falling for him. And he says, he's talking about Emiko. Look at her, Tara. Take another look at Emiko. You know her, Tara. When, yeah. she was, when she was, oh, what should we say? When she was an ordinary woman, not a bad looking woman. <laughs> I mean, he literally, I'm like, what in the hell? Mm, great crazy. dialogue. Great dialogue. And Nico can hear everything you're saying. <laughs> Oh man, it was good. Try to, and then he's talking to Emiko at the end before he kills her. Try to understand. Can't you remember? You could try harder. Yes. Really try this time. You used to be my wife, and before that, you were my sweetheart. Remember? Like God. You I, could I, if you tried harder. Right, tried harder. <laughs> try harder. Do better, Amiko. You disappoint me. I'm not oh mad. Oh my gosh. I'm just, dis yeah, just disappointed. <laughs> Are you gaslighting me? <laughs> oh, God. Stop it. <laughs> and his brother. He has a similar thing. You were my brother. You were an experiment that didn't work out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Genji. Boom. <laughs> <Frozen in Alaska. laughs> guy so yeah that i thought the makeup on her was she was cringy I, I liked it she's got the hairy hands and the claws and the the teeth teeth it, mm. yeah. this is, i'm gonna look over here for this, this, is, a, what, this is a great drive-in <laughs> come on yeah, if you, mm -hmm. you need to yeah go out People there in their, in their all your friends and going, and, ah! yeah. you know, it's like <laughs> But you mentioned the, uh, the way she talked, Chad. I mean, she, I swear, everybody in the movie had the same scream, even the police, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all just. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, she's played by uh, Toyoko Takachi. Takichi? I don't know. <laughs> So there, there is a couple of interesting things about these people. Um, and I probably won't remember them now. 
Uh, George Brakeston, the co-director and the originator of the story, was a child actor turned director. He played a character named Beezy in seven Andy Hardy movies. Hmm. Beezy. Before he went to being directing. Uh, and Peter Dinelly, I mean, when I watch this movie, I'm thinking these people, I'm, you know, not to be judgmental or anything, but they probably didn't do a whole lot else. I don't recognize this guy. <laughs> I don't recognize his wife. Uh, I thought surely um, Terry Zimmern would have been in other stuff, but she has no other credits than this. Uh, and by the way, she got married to the co-director. Um whose name always drops out of Kenneth, my mind. Is it Kenneth Grain? Yes, yes, Kenneth Grain, yeah. who directed the U.S. sequences of Half Human, a Toho picture. Yep. Oh, um, he did Monster from Green Hell. Oh, yes. Uh... And, the, and the, the U.S. versions of the U.S. versions of uh, scenes in uh, for, for Half Human are John Carradine. Mm. telling the story of the movie to people in his office and then he, he tells a few lines of the story and then we fade into the real movie uh, anyway I, I, so they had there was guess Raymond Burr was busy that day <laughs> Peter Dinelly did you guys see uh, he's, he's got uh, some media well I that he was a narrator in the day of the Triffids. Yep. I wouldn't have put that together. No, I mean, in there. yeah. I, I, I did find some scenes really interesting. Um, like we were talking about the lighting of the two headed, um, the scenes with the two heads. And there was some scenes where he was stalking women down um, streets and stuff at night that I thought were really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interesting and cool shots. I um, appreciated those. Yeah, it, it did a lot to actually hold the, you know, to make the film better than it yeah, was. Yeah. I mean, because if it was filmed like, you know, like a wood picture, it would have been, you would have right. exposed all the silliness and uh -huh. it wouldn't have been watchable at all. But yeah. It yeah. Did. Well, it's and only, if, uh, what, 72, 73 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's light, but it's. And we, we start off with Genji kills the three women in the bath although we don't see it we just see them mm -hmm. i guess we don't anyway. well we see the nice splatter that was actually yeah oh that's right you're right there was a good splatter mm -hmm. up on that screen blood yeah. splatter that was that was pretty good yeah and it starts right. starts right off with that mm -hmm. yeah so that's three mm -hmm. then we turn over turn around to uh the larry manster and larry manster <laughs> i don't think he kills anybody till the uh buddhist priest or is, does he kill that's somebody? his first no i think that's his first kill. yeah and then he's then he's like killing people right and left. Yeah, he kills those two <laughs> two or three women on the street. He kills yep. a psychiatrist. He gets in the chase, <laughs> foot chases with the cops, and he's killing cops. And that one Jump he left leaves, and right, on the, leaves on the big log gong yeah. for that bell. Oh, oh that that's know. actually pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, I love that. They they just the like, Tokyo police that? just couldn't keep up with him. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but the actor, okay, so who watched Thunderbirds? Chad, did you ever watch Thunderbirds? I saw some of it. I watched yeah. a few of them, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was one of the characters. He was the voice of one of the characters. He looked a lot younger in that. He was, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> no more wooden. Uh, he was Jeff Tracy, Jeff, Commander Norman, yeah. and Preston. But Jeff, Jeff Tracy. Tracy. He played Jeff Tracy. Um, and he also did the countdown at the beginning of the title sequence. Yeah, Martian Pete. <laughs> it's a character called Martian Pete. Oh man, that movie, that show, and then Thunderbirds are a go. Did it again. I guess that was a movie of it, right? Thunderbird yep. Six just kept yep. going. That was. I haven't actually seen that, but I have seen you know like stills from it and photos of it. I wasn't a, you know, like I'm gonna watch this every week, but I I saw a few of them. Yeah, it was one of those things you just catch a couple of them. And then it would disappear. <laughs> you could yeah. play it back when we were kids. Like, what was that? What was that? Uh, Strings. Let's see. 
<laughs> well, any other, you know, I, I don't know what to say about the, Ellen, the writer, um, only had a total of four credits, including this. No. And I think that might have been part of the problem. <laughs> might have been. He certainly was still learning his chops on the dialogue. It's a dialogue so nice. But I, I, the director stepped in and, well, did he, you said he came up with the story. He didn't come in and write the script. No, it said his was, uh, he was uh, George, original story by Drakeston. Okay. Um, and then the screenplay by uh, Sheldon. I'm, I'm wondering how much of the dialogue he wrote on. But those. for a guy I, I don't, <laughs> for a guy I don't recognize, he has a hundred credits. Mm -hmm. um, but none since 1978 because he I want to say he died in 77 um, and a lot of them could have been English he was an English actor that uh, spent a bunch of time in Canada so he was really good at English American either either way I would be interested in um, watching the other because you were talking about how it was a joint um, project. I wonder if there were other uh, movies that um, shared these actors and, or the, the at least the film crew and the, it's American well, production in Japan. That I don't know. That Shaw, that mm -hmm. Braxton Shaw company, I, this is the only thing listed under mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I was trying to find out if silly me, I, I forgot that the Shaw brothers were Chinese. <laughs> And I was trying oh, to figure no. out if, mm -hmm. if the Shaw was some connection, mm -hmm. but I, I could find nothing mm -hmm. about who Shaw is on that. Um, <laughs> I just love how on uh, Peter Dinelli's, um IMDb page, the clip that's showing is Thunderbirds. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of different vehicles blasting off and flying and stuff. And anyway, um, I should watch this episode of um, a virus movie macabre. See what see what her take is. What her oh, comments yeah. are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there and there was a movie. Let's see, I think that Brakeston. There was something before this that Brakeston directed, and he only had fourteen credits. That Peter Dinelli was in. You're right, Doc. It would be a good drive-in movie. I, oh, I feel like great. it just sucks you, sucks you in. You don't have to hear all the dialogue. You, you, you know, you just watch it. Just watch it. It you it makes you watch. I definitely watched it. It had my eyes. <laughs> it had your eyes. It right? had my yes, eyes on yes. the screen. Yeah, it had my eye. It had my eye. Ah. <laughs> ah. So uh, Tetsu Nakamura, <clears throat> who plays Dr. Suzuki. Suzuki check, Samurai! Check this before I say it, he was in Red Sun. Do you remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, 1971 with Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifune. Oh. It, it was a uh, probably your first samurai western. I don't Toshiro remember. Mifumi was the emperor's samurai, and the, the emperor had sent a samurai sword to the president of the United States, and it got stolen. And Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifumi are supposed to work together to find it. He plays hmm. the uh, Japanese ambassador. Can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Wrong movie, but I'm sure you <laughs> I, I I saw that in the theaters. I thought it was pretty good, but who knows what I would think now. That's, you know, it was oh cool. It was like gunfighting oh. and samurai swords. I bet yeah. it was probably pretty good. Ursula, Ursula Andrus, Andrus was in it. Yeah. yeah. I really like Toshiro Mifune. Or Toshiro Mifune. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. but Yeah, I don't either. I may have said that wrong. Mifune. Uh, and I'm, that, that's who was also in Latitude yeah, Zero <laughs> and Space Amoeba. Yes. Yes, oh, I was wait, I've been waiting for you guys to. Space Amoeba, remember that, Chad? Space Amoeba. Remember it? Remember it? Oh, <laughs> and Latitude Zero has got to be on the. Uh... We did that, didn't we? Did you do Latitude Zero already? No, you got on the 70s. Oh, okay. No, uh, Space Amoeba. Well, Space Amoeba, we did. Latitude Zero, yeah. we haven't. Latitude no, Zero we, haven't. Is... we haven't done Latitude that. Latitude Zero is not as 
Not no, really. great. But it, it's well, it's strange. It's got strange names. Uh, At but, Atragon, Mothra. Atragon. Oh, this, the human vapor. That sounds good. No, the human vapor. Oh my god. It's my Uncle John. H man. H man. Do you, Do you remember the the movie from seventy seven, The Last Dinosaur, Richard Boone? Hell yeah, he's in that. He's <laughs> yes, in that. he is. A Go Rankin ahead. Bass production. <laughs> is it a Rankin Bass? I think no. so. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. Any final point comments point? on the Manster? Go watch anyway. it. Watch it right away. Yeah, watch it. It's oh pretty gosh. available. You know. <laughs> Go watch it right now. <laughs> watch it. Make a drink. Make Maybe it a double. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it has the new enzyme in it. <laughs> That's good. Get the Be ready for a three-day binge. That's good enzyme. Mm. Oh, some, some great theremin, too. <laughs> yeah, every time the, the music monster... was good. Yeah, <laughs> the music was also <laughs> pretty good. The music, the music was like fifties or sixties suspense television plus theremin. You know? <laughs> it had it all. It was bothered by the eyeball or something like that. The theremin kicked in. Oh, lots of lots of nice crescendos. Yeah, that and the bum bum bum. That was, I love. I love how he's good. hiding in the alley that in that one thing, the manster. <laughs> and the cops are running down the street, and the last guy running down the street, he just reaches out, reaches out, and clotheslines him. Picks him oh, up. Yeah. That's Chucks it. him up. He's Chucks done. him over there. <laughs> all right, all right. Who you guys should check out the manster. Fake. The manster. Currently. On Tubi and Amazon Prime. Yes, check it out. I want to hear what people think. If you haven't seen oh, it's yes. great. it's, feedback, it's, feedback. Oh, you need feedback. to watch it. <laughs> Love to, love it, to it's hear it. Great fun, and I'll tell you the first time, the first time that head popped up, it shocked me because I didn't know what I was watching. You know, it was just <laughs> uh, that was a that was a wow. And then the other time was <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's a wow, but it, yeah, yeah there was the other time was when he got in front of the when jacket. He splits. I didn't expect. <laughs> I did not expect the yeah. split. I did all. not expect the split. I'm either. like, what the? Yeah. Wow! But it was. I didn't I, expect the split either. It was. Uh, it was done. Mm -hmm. It was both hilarious and extraordinary. Exactly. Well done. It was. Yeah. So they got this tree in the middle, and then you mm -hmm. go, ur, 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 and they just pop out. Yeah, I know. And, and that's a that's a great way to describe it because well, kind of yeah, works. That, yeah. <laughs> You know what's happening when you see it. You're like, oh, the tree's right in the middle. Okay, yeah. I get it. I see what's going to happen. But it, at the same time, I loved it. I thought it was I, did, I loved that his, his clothes were tattered. Like only on the yes. right side mm -hmm. where the guy would have popped out of. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's good. See, just just for this, but he, but he comes worth. out. He comes out totally six foot tall and fuzzy. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he falls down. And like in a space of like one second, he goes through three dissolves and he's back to his normal human face. Exactly. <laughs> Completely mobile on his side. No, no scarring. <laughs> yeah. How do you no open wound? Nothing. <laughs> How do you hide the magic trick? You put a tree in the way. Exactly. No, no indications of a six foot like, monkey. Just I know. Out, so. And then he tried to redeem himself, but it was too late, dude. It was too late. You yeah. should have went over with him. We would have, we'd have, we would have felt a lot more empathy yeah. for you if you would have if sacrificed you... yourself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's a good point. We have some feedback, but really, check out Mancer. If you haven't seen the Mancer, you got to You need to check it out. And I'm going to skip down on the feedback. Uh, <laughs> Just down a couple until you get to uh, Planet of the Vampires. Okay. Uh, so we have a comment on episode 94, Planet of the Vampires, and Guy Grip, Guy Grip. 9634 says, yeah, in all like caps and exclamation point, you guys got to do Journey to the Seventh Planet. He might be right. Which is an early <laughs> 60s uh, sci fi flick with. Uh, John Agar making a trip. Agar. Uranus. Oh, is he making the trip too. Thank you very much. See, you lost me there. <laughs> oh. I have to. I have to look and see if where it's. 
how available it is. Well, it says it's not streaming, but you know what? I'm going to check out our buddy with Play Now Media and see what we get there. Mm, um, okay. And it, or it may be on YouTube or you know, it's one of those ones. I'm sure. A trip into pure hell. This is taglines for Jeff. Well, you know well, how much you can rely on those taglines. I know. I know. <laughs> Chad, Chad didn't see what I did there. Right. And you know. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Okay. Um, Can we move on then? But, but in Uranus, <laughs> there's probably some backside action. Uh, it came from Outer Space, episode 155. <laughs> I think we just, YouTube just blinked us out on that one. Um, all right. <laughs> it's actually pronounced Uranus, I, I think. But, yeah, nobody's going to pronounce it like that. Anyway, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Episode 155, 155, it came from outer space. Chad, you want to take this one from Lone Wolf? Lone Wolf. Sure. What's up, Lone Wolf? He says, a true sci-fi classic that helped mold the atomic age of cinema, along with other classics like War of the Worlds, The Blob, Godzilla, and others. I still have that old book about this film, mm. a little old book with orange letters on it. Yes, I'm talking about the Crestwood series. Yes, buddy. That series is what created my interest in the black and white horror films of that era. So happy to see lovable Daphne again, as well as the OG himself, Doc Rotten. No. I agree, man. That Those old Crestwood books, I, uh, I kept half of them. I would check them out of the library. And I, I probably still owe like a million dollars, and I would just keep those out forever. Oh, God, I hate. <laughs> yes, I'm returning these books, and I'd like to also check them out right now, immediately. Back, <laughs> it just seemed like too much trouble for us. Yeah, so I need. To, I, why should I even take them in? Right. Uh, just, okay. Next up, episode 156, The City of the Dead, from Gregory Crosby. Daphne? Sure. Gregory Crosby. What fun that none of the crew had seen this. I've seen it three <laughs> or four times. It's one of my gothic faves. Yes. It now, was a lot of fun. If I recall correctly, Gregory is one that offered to give us a tutorial on gothic mm. cinema. Ah, so he knows of what he's. He speaks. knows his stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I liked it too. And I, it's, it's, you know, when we see a movie like that, I always feel bad. I had seen parts of it before, but I, mm -hmm. I couldn't have told you the story, other than the blonde goes to the scary looking hotel, and there's witches <laughs> and Christopher Lee. Yeah. And Christopher hey. Lee is really tall. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, we have one from Scott Wells, Doc. Yes, you want ready? Me to do yeah, ready. I'll do this one. Sure. Uh, Scott Wells says uh, this one has to be has always been a favorite of mine, and I tend to lump it in as the proto folk horror piece. Okay. Okay. You are absolutely correct in saying that no witches were burned in Salem in, in 1692 or 1962, as I was about to say. Though one was pressed to death. E okay. I was waiting for the laugh. Uh, even on the planet, if a witch, was I was imagining somebody being pressed yes, to death. I know. Too. I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking old women mashing grapes in a big tub to drink wine. And there happened to be a witch in the bottom of it. That's where my oh, mind. Oh, there goes. you go. Yeah, you got. I love Lucy going around going. Hoo, 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 hoo. Um, even the even on the continent, if a witch was to be burned, they generally were not burned alive which is purely a cinematic trope. I'm a big fan of John Lewin, 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 Lewin Moxie, easy for me to say, mostly from his TV movies of the 70s. He's a great, he's great at atmosphere. It's all the more remarkable that, uh, that this was his first feature as lead director. Sorry for my absence in commenting. I'll work more at it. Life is a little busy right now. I can Ain't it, though? It is. And he actually uh, did, 
I think he made a comment on House of Dracula, but well, you lived up to your promise. I like that. Uh, yeah, Scott <laughs> Scott's got his own uh, website, and uh, people should check that out. And I can never friggin' remember it, but he is a member of uh, uh, our Facebook group. Yeah, nice. Chris Magazine's H and R and D O H podcast Facebook Good. group. We need to rename that group. It's a little long. Uh, <laughs> Got over zealous. Anyway, <laughs> um, I love when just a, just an aside. I saw. I got to start sending messages to uh, Bill Gabriel. He posted today, uh, the Deep House. Has anybody seen this? He posted the trailer. Like, yeah, we we did a review two years ago, Bill. <laughs> mm. Here's here's a gruesome magazine link. Um, a lot a bunch of people piped up, one of which was Scott, I think, talking mm. about how you kind of like this. Scott's uh, um, Scott's Scott Wells's um, group on Facebook is called Saturday Mad Theater. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty and cool. Lots too. of cool stuff on there. Yeah, and I think his website might be called something like that too. Mm. Oh, that's right. I for, Yes, he has a website, too. Remember, he told he us about that reviews, a while ago. Some yeah. some things. Um, thanks, Scott. Good to hear from you. And uh, now one from Michael Zatz, a.k.a. Mikey Z. <laughs> on City of the Dead. Chad, you want to take that one? Me? Is it that? Did I skip the wrong way? No, I went the right way. Did you do one? <laughs> I've I've been talking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> For which one? City of the Dead. Uh, City of the Dead. Mikey, he's got to find. Dad. He's stalling because he's got to find it. That's so <laughs> great. Uh, Mike Z says Patricia Jessel and Christopher Lee in one of his earlier non-hammer roles. Excel as not. Excel is not so nice. People, people in people in this tale of witches and curses. John, the Night Stalker, Llewellyn Moxie, helms an atmospheric story. Miss Jessel is frightfully good as the evil, reincarnated, resurrected Selwyn Newless. Still not as groaning a name as Alucard Dracula, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> a great horror moment occurs when Nan meets some of the members of the coven beneath the inn. The iconic image of Bill stabbed in the back, holding the large cross, advancing on the coven. Is an image that will stay with you. I'm going to read love, this like I love the voice. I keep yeah, going. it's like working. It's a, <laughs> well, a wildlife show or something. <laughs> so Richard Attenborough reads <laughs> feedback. Fun film that I saw in the mid '70s as Horror Hotel on late night TV, and had not seen again until the '90s <laughs> when I caught it on VHS in not so great a copy. I have since seen this in better resolution copy, and a lot of the sets and set designs really pop out at you. Great performances by all, especially Jessel and Lee as the two antagonists. Great podcast as usual, Guru Guru. I think Doc has settled in nicely and love his pick for the next classic episode. Might that other Euro Kaiju-like classic be far behind? Reptilicus? Mm, Keep being classy, guys. Hey. Thanks, Thanks, Mikey. Mikey. Mikey has taken on the voice of Kim Newman. <laughs> <laughs> the British horror. That was very nice. Comment. It was. It was very good. And mm -hmm. nice, nice comment, Mikey. Good to hear from you. <laughs> so, speaking Mikey. of which, moving on to episode one fifty-seven, Gorgo. <laughs> and I had to. I had to put this in. Nick Gadman says, "Damn." I'm behind on pods. Need to catch up. Yes, Nick. Uh, Great to hear from you, Nick. <laughs> Great to hear from you, Nick. Well, he's spreading the gospel of the uh, alien um, UAPs and UFOs and all that stuff. So, well, we're uh, missing you, Nick. If you need to know anything, check it out with Nick because <laughs> he's he's got it. Nick's the man. Um. So Chad just read that one. So Daphne, here's one from Lone Wolf on Gorgo. Okay. Lone Wolf. Yay. Now I feel like quoting that line Lewis Gossett Jr. says in Jaws 3D. You mean the damn shark's mother? <laughs> um, I love Gorgo so much. It was a great ripoff of Godzilla. And there's just something about the creature's head design that I adore. The odd, 
amphibian look at it. Oh, I totally agree, Lone Wolf. It's awesome. My first experience with the movie was on TNT back in the early 90s with my mm. dad. Okay. We're having a blast with it. Thanks for bringing back a happy memory from my childhood. Yes. Yay. Yeah, those are the ones. Those are the ones. You know, and that reminds me, let's see. You know, thinking back to what Scott Wills, Wills said, is I remember when we did this and I was looking at John Llewellyn Moxie's credits and saw all those TV horror movies in the early 70s. Uh, and all of them were fairly well rated and had good actors. And it's like, mm -hmm. at the time, I remember thinking, I got to go seek those out. And then I forgot. So time to unforget and go so thanks scott um all right also ah uh, here's a good one let's see mm. that was daphne so doc oh i get to do jerry jerry chandler all right this, this is from our good bud jerry chandler he says go go <laughs> <laughs> the film i always mix up in my head with gappa until i actually sit down and watch them yes yes i understand that actually hey same decade same starting letter in the name. They both repeat the vowel. <laughs> and both involve baby monsters being taken uh, to a faraway land and parents coming to get them. However, only one is worth seeing. More than once in a blue moon. Which one is it? Uh, that would be Gorgo, he says. He answers my question before. Right? Okay. Not a great kaiju movie, but a good one and a fun one. It's well done, especially grading on a curve compared to many kaiju films that came out in the wake of Godzilla. And there are more than a few effectively shot scenes with the monster. Mm -hmm. I wish I would quit mixing these up in my head so often. This is a film I want to watch most of the time when I sit down to watch Ngaba. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like, oh, crap. <laughs> um, and he finally you know, says... He mixed up... Uh... The nest too, with with they nest. Mm. So when we did the when we did the podcast, and I'm listening word, to it, and it off, I right? didn't recognize anything they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Just lost the why. All right, he, so he he ends up with this. I'm driving to Jeff's place and stealing that it came from outer space book. Which That's room good. is it kept in, and on what floor? Uh oh, and he can do it. <laughs> Probably. I'm, I'm but, still but convinced he's been in my house at some point. <laughs> he might still be there. Somebody stole all my Kraft macaroni and cheese. That's how I know. It's, it's, it's in the triple locked <laughs> room in the back on the oh, basement, uh, guarded by the hellhound. Yeah, yes. Chad found all his hot dogs cut up like octopus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Parts no. of octopi. Which Jerry has been known to do. Yes. <laughs> Little ketchup eyeballs. It's crazy. All right. So here's a great one from Dirk Rogers. Dirk. Uh, Dirk. About Gorgo. And I re this is actually great because I, I found this out when I was editing the blog and uh, put the you know put the credits in in the list of credits, but I didn't I didn't say anything about it. So uh, Dirk, where are we at? Chad? Oh, this is about the, the makeup or the effects guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Dirk says, hey, Grew Crew, another great episode for a fun movie. When Doc mentioned Bob Burra as the actor in the monster suit, I became curious about him and if he had done anything else creature suit related. What I found in my research is that even though he is credited as the man in the Gorgo suit in the trivia section of IMDb, that the creature was actually played by stuntman Mick Dillon. Dillion. Dillian had a history of playing stunt doubles for Buster Keaton, Ringo Starr, and David Hemmings. Oh, that's a, a that's a variety. David yeah, Hemmings. yeah. David that's a Welcome sort of a disparate, a disparate group there. <laughs> he was a suit performer in the movie version of Doctor Who and the Daleks, where he played a Dalek, and he also played a Triffid in the movie Day of the Triffids. Hmm. Whoa. Hmm. Two Day of the Triffids references in the same episode. Wow, that movie. Yeah. I dug a bit deeper to confirm this and found a book called Keep Watching the Skies, Ooh. American Science Fiction Movies of the 50s by Bill Warren, which said that Gorgo and the baby, Orga, was actually played by four different actors, Mick Dillion, David Wilding, Peter Brace, and Peter Perkins. 
but the author could only confirm Mick Dillion's involvement. This needless trivia <laughs> has been brought to you <laughs> by someone who obviously has too much time on his hands due to the necessary ongoing strikes, but can't wait to get back to work. Cheers to all. Cheers, indeed. Thanks, Derek. Dirk. Yeah, Derek. Dirk. 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 Uh, Dirk. Dirk. Dirk works for one of the biggest uh, special effects houses in L.A. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what we what IMDb now lists uh Mick Dillon, Dave Wilding, and uh Bob Bira and John uh and Bob Bira as uncredited Gorgos. They don't have the other anyway. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. And and it had that credit in there, so who knows? Um thanks, Dirk. Yeah, he's been spending too much time with us is the whole thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole problem. Yeah. yeah, I think that Dillion is a uh, was a was a typo. It's Dylan. Is it Dylan? Yeah, Mick Dillon. Um, I didn't notice that. Well, uh, let's go ahead and do these other I, ones. I, I, I just read it as it's written. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay then. Okay then. <laughs> 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 Oh, cross me, young man. <laughs> yeah. so we have some decent comments about House of Dracula already, which House, just went live yesterday. House of Dracula. Uh, House of Dracula, 1945, from Greg Miller from The Land Down Under. Uh, Daphne, can you take that one? Sure. I just zipped up everything, so I got to give me a second here. Sorry. Oh, you thought I was going to quit. <laughs> Sorry, sorry you, sorry. you know better than that, Daphne. I know. Okay, I'm back. We don't quit <laughs> before two hours are over. Jeff never quit. <laughs> Craig Miller. With this and the previous movie, House of Frankenstein, if you don't think about the plots, it's like a bunch of friends who visit each other's homes. I like that. <laughs> One year they get together at the Frankenstein house, and next year it's Dracula's turn to host. Strange days indeed. Glenn Strange, of course. Ah, but don't go. Nice one. Nice one, Greg. Nice, Greg. You're right. We all <laughs> they, they just come on over. So it reminded me of something that would happen in uh, what we do in the shadows. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uncle Gil. All right. Doc, how about Lone Wolf? Lone Wolf. House of Dracula. House of Dracula is proof that the Universal Era was pretty much on the way out but I still enjoyed it. Maybe it's my bias for werewolves, but I felt like Lon Chaney Jr. carried the film for me. He seemed to be the only one <laughs> with a constant premise throughout these films. The poor guy just wants a cure and probably a big hug from all of us. <laughs> Heart. I, although I cheered for him as a kid, when he was temporarily cured. I totally agree with Doc that it goes against the entire point of the character. <laughs> To be cursed, sad man for the rest of his life. Love you guys as always. Hmm. Thank you. Right back at you, Thanks, Lone, Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Appreciate it. You're awesome. Uh, and then Gregory Crosby on House of Dracula. Chad. And Gregory says House of Dracula is fun, but it so suffers from the lack of Karloff. It does who brought so much uh, to the equally anemic House of Frankenstein, which is, I, I like House better than, uh, Frankenstein better than House of Dracula, just probably probably because of that reason. That Franken no, pulling the stake out of the Dracula and he comes back. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. No, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman is the best of the series after Son of Frankenstein. Mm. Well, my shirt. I got my shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> also, I greatly appreciated the shout out for John Carradine in Bluebeard. Ah. One of Ed, Edward G. Ulmer's best. Carradine is perfect in it. Ooh, I forgot it was uh, Ulmer was a director. He did uh, the Black Cat mm -hmm. from '34, mm -hmm. which is uh, a damn near some of the movie. lesser sci-fi, you know, the low-budget sci-fi stuff in the '50s. But but does a lot with what he's given. Carradine is perfect in it. That's what he said? That's what he said. <laughs> all right, Mikey Z. Does somebody want to uh, 
somebody want to read this? Sure. In the in the order of com of of completest. What Stephanie's turn. Oh, okay. Can, Sorry. It's, it's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> not my fave of the Uni Frankenstein series, but not without its charm. Consistencies go out the window, or should I say, over the cliff. Over the cliff. How did the landlocked bog of House of Frankenstein become this cliffside vista, the Zattelman's estate? That's a good question. But forget about the topographic issues. Carradine is conniving as the Count, whose motivation to me was always to get Melissa under his wing. This film deals with two duality-cursed victims, one about to be cured and another starting his multiple personality tour. Anso Stevens is the film for me. His transformation from the religious doctor of good of goodwill to the murderous creature of the night is chilling and heartbreaking. As pointed out by the group crew, his flinging of Nina down the trap door at the end is chilling. Fling. <laughs> direction, <laughs> direction by Kenton is first rate, but you see the low budgetness more blatantly here than in earlier films in the series. My favorite shot is one that was used in 1932's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and here as well. When Dr. Edelman is running and you get that great shadow effect on the wall. Mm, yes. I remember that one, I, and we didn't say anything about it, but he's... He's running and we see the shadow get huge really mm -hmm. fast. In the... I thought that looked familiar. Okay, thanks. I think that um, was that was done in um, the Creeping Flesh too as well on the side of the building uh, if, where the, the shadow kept getting bigger even though it actually should have gotten smaller. Oh, okay. But, uh, I think this um, same effect was in Kenton's Island of Lost Souls as well. Mm. I think, yeah. Love that every time. I could go on and on about this film, but don't want to tie up the feedback portion of your podcast. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best ending of the series, but wait three more years and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein would be the final last appearances of the beloved cre creations and contain more monster on monster action to close out the series begun 17 years earlier. Trivia. Martha O'Driscoll appeared in Abbott and Costello film Here Comes the Coeds that also featured Lon Chaney, Lon Chaney as well. The and the Batman connection, <laughs> Jane Addams was Vicki Vale in the 1949 Batman Columbia serial. Hmm. I think we mentioned that one, but yeah. I, yeah, I think so. Oh, did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel bad if somebody's finding Batman connection to me. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, that's except, unless it's Mikey Z. Mikey Z. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, it's a it's not the Batman TV show. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. Batman. Show. But that what I either think. either makes mm -hmm. it not worthy or very special. Worthy. I haven't decided. <laughs> I haven't decided. But I'm glad it's here. He's got the years. He's got the years. <laughs> All right, that's our feedback for today. And wow, that was a bunch. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Yes, yeah, thank you so it. much. All. Lone Wolf, Dirk Rogers, Jerry Chandler, Nick Gadman. Mikey Z, Scott Wells, Gregory Crosby, and I th oh, Greg Miller. Good to hear from you, Greg. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. All righty. Well, you know what? Chicken butt. Monkey butt. That's it for this episode. <laughs> yes, Every two weeks, we'll be <laughs> focusing on a specific film released between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by Daphne. What are we doing, Daphne? We're going to do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from 1920 with uh, John Barrymore. John Barrymore. And you actually have to say that because there was another. Oh, was there another one in 20? Yeah. With John was... Barrymore is the one. <laughs> and I love the one is... we watched before. And so, and I'd never seen the yeah, one with yeah. him. So I'm... Well, and somebody else uh, suggested this. I almost think it might have been Mikey Z that said, mm -hmm. you know, you need, now you need to do this one. Mm -hmm. uh, no and it's about time. Not time for a silent movie. What? It's silent. There's no and subtitles. It's subtitled. It? Yeah. God. There's a musical. Oh, number. we're doing the Swedish version, the director's cut. How did How did you like the the <laughs> How did you like the dance uh, sequence in the in the master? Oh, yeah. There? yeah, there was a bunch. <laughs> there was three of them right in a row. Yeah. First, Why? they went to a jazz. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> then he did the. 
I don't know what that was. <laughs> what was what's the real? What is the? Can, I don't know. I want to be in my pitch meeting where somebody goes, "Let's make the most terrifying horror film." Yeah, but we need three dance numbers in this one. <laughs> and a drunk. We need a drunk. Uh, all right. This, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde is around 80 minutes. And it is streaming like everywhere. It's on uh, Classic Horror Movie Channel. It's in public domain, isn't it? So. Uh, probably. I think it is. Yeah. It's on Prime. It's on Tubi. It's on Criterion, Hoopla, Canopy, Crackle, and Screenbox. And I'm sure that there are varying qualities of mm. pictures yeah, on that. Find so us the best one and tell us. Find, find a good one. Yeah. I'm sure Criterion is a good one. Um, I don't know about Tubi, Hoopla, Canopy, Crackle. Those are all free services. So, um, Anyway... That's I'd like it. to do uh, Thomas Edison's Frankenstein at some point. Yeah, but it's only like fifteen minutes long. But I, I don't, so I don't do know. Do a special one. Special yeah. Show. Well, there's a couple other we could we could add a couple of uh, how is it pronounced? Mealy. George Millet. Yeah the the French. That's a good idea. Weird, mm, I had a couple of them in there too. Yeah. Um, oh. We can do that one with the uh, or maybe that's one you're talking about with the eye. With. Oh, the, the moon in the eye. That's well, no, no, the one with the slashing, the la, la chien or something, where the slashing of the eye. Because I think that's only 10 or 15 minutes. I think. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, I, I just saw one that was labeled as the first horror movie, and it was supposed to be, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a George Millet the, with the, the devil and some other oh, shenanigans. Okay. Faust? Going, uh, Faust? It's like five minutes. All right. Faust is, are you talking yeah, about Faust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, we're doing some shorts. That would be fun. Be different. Be different for sure. <laughs> Okie dokie. And <laughs> we love hearing from you, as you can see. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, it'd be nice to have so much feedback that we don't have time to read it. And we're mm -hmm. kind of getting there, but I'd like to hear from some other people. You know, we have thousands of. Uh, downloads and viewers so it'd be nice if uh we'd get some additional voices in here yeah tell us about your experience watching the movie tell us what we got wrong tell us what you'd like to hear us talk about uh tell us how long it was before we started actually talking about the movie <laughs> anyway uh send feedback to feedback at gruesome or on uh, gruesome magazine's youtube channel or the gruesome magazine's hnr and doh podcast facebook group or even on the website at gruesomemagazine.com. This is a fun one. Thanks, guys. Uh, catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie, as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>